D I A S T A S I S. <laughs> Diastasis recti. What is it and how do you fix it? This is a topic that I know is very important to a lot of people. I suffered from it and I know a lot of you women have as well. It typically happens to women after pregnancy and even during pregnancy. So I'm gonna tell you how you can fix it. So what is diastasis recti? Well, diastasis means separation and recti is rectus abdominis. So diastasis is the separation of your rectus abdominis muscles. Typically it happens around the belly button. How do you figure out if you have it? Well, do this, lie on your back and you're going to extend your legs, taking these three fingers you're going to press into your belly button. Then what I want you to do is raise your head up. If you can take these fingers and you can press them and keep going, almost like you're going into your stomach, then you probably have diastasis recti. I have it, but not nearly as bad as I did before because of doing the exercises that I'm gonna show you today. All right, so the first movement that we're gonna do today is a heel slide. So you're going to lie on your back. And what I want you to do is really focus on pulling your abdominal muscles into your lower back. So that means that your lower back should be completely flat with the floor. All right, and you really should focus on your hip tilt to be in and down. So you don't want the hips like this. You want them pulled in and tight, and your abs are tight, your back is against the floor. I'm gonna slide up the mat a little bit. Okay, so holding that position, hands by the side, you're gonna take a deep breath. Let it out, bringing your ribs down. Once you are in that position, you are going to slowly slide the foot down the mat and having a sock might help to make it a little bit more slippery. And you're gonna slide it out and slide it in, not moving in your core at all. You wanna be extra pulled in and tight. How much you think about this movement, how much you focus on this movement is how much benefit you're going to get from it. So sliding it in, you can do it like 10 times and on each side. And what you can do as well is you can slide out all the way, bring the foot up and the heel back down, slide out, bringing it up. You shouldn't be wobbling or moving. And if you wanna breathe every time, take a new breath. Ribs come down, in, back is against the mat, slide it out, and bring it back. So you're very, you're working very consciously and actively. This doesn't seem like a crazy wild movement, it's not, but in the beginning, when you are working on these movements, they are very effective and they can really help to bring that core back together. So you're gonna do 10 of those on each side. All right, the next movement is going to be on all fours on the mat. So I'm gonna kind of move you guys around a little bit. So with this movement, you wanna have 90 degrees in the shoulder and the wrist, okay? And then 90 degrees in the knees and in the hips. Now what I want you to do is kind of make that cat position, like an angry cat. You're gonna pull your abs up into your lower back, rounding your back. Now, I don't want you like this. Your ears are not in your shoulders here. Your shoulders should be relaxed. It's all your pelvic. You're tucking your butt under. Your abs are pulled into your spine. You're gonna take six breaths here in this position. Breathe into your upper back. Blow out through your abs, and that should bring your ribs down and seal your abs in nice and tight. So I'm expanding my upper back with the breath in. And 
and I'm breathing out, bringing my abs in. Now, once you've done that for six breaths, you might wanna take, shake it out. Then what you're gonna do is getting into that same position, that angry kind of cat position, keeping your butt tucked, you're gonna slightly lean forward, and this time you're gonna take one hand away. If you notice, my abdominals instantly become engaged in this position. And I start to really work here. So start with all fours, taking that four to six deep conscious breaths. Then you're gonna go to taking one hand away. And eventually you wanna get to a plank position. This is advanced though, so don't try it right away. But eventually you wanna be like this, breathing. This is a movement I worked on for months and it really creates a lot of uh, pelvic stability and core strength that will really help repair that rectus abdominis. We're gonna go back to that all fours position and we're gonna do opposite hand and leg. So again, make sure that you're in that 90 degrees in the hips, the knees, the wrists are under the shoulders. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend our opposite hand and leg. And I want you to hold it there for three to five seconds. And then you're gonna switch to the other side. Now make sure when you do this movement that you're not here. A lot of people tend to do this. Do you see how I'm broken? My knee is bent, my back is arched, my head is up. You wanna think of a neutral spine, a straight line from your finger to your heel. Am I doing it right? <laughs> okay. Every time, so that means that your pelvis has to be tucked. Your abs have to be engaged and tight in order to get that straight line. And your toe is pulled in towards your knee. And you're gonna hold it. So you're gonna go back and forth with that movement for like 20 reps. If you wanna take it and get more advanced as you get comfortable with it, you're gonna extend, bring them in till the knee touches the uh, elbow and bring it back out. But remember, that's gonna be more advanced as you go. Maybe you've been doing these other movements I've given you for a month or so before you try that, or maybe even two months. The next movement is called a short lever lateral plank, okay? So typically when we do side planks, we're like this. We're creating a short lever here by bending our knees. You're gonna go up onto um, kind of like your elbow and your knee, and you're gonna hold the plank in this position. Now there's a couple modifications you can do here. You can slightly roll forward and come up onto your toes. That creates a lot of work in your obliques. You can stay here and straighten your top leg. It's not quite as advanced, so maybe start here. And you're gonna hold it 20, 30 seconds. But what I really want you to do is focus on your breathing. Okay, so we'll start in this position. I like to keep my hand by my side. I'm gonna tuck my butt and I'm gonna breathe into my upper back. Every time I breathe out, I'm bringing my, my ribs down and back, okay? Just like that. You probably will only get three to four reps and then you can, or excuse me, three to four breaths, and then you can switch to that other side. So you can go uh, top leg is straight, or you can keep it here. And like I said, if you wanna go advanced, kind of come up so the knees are off. And again, you're breathing. And to really focus on your obliques, in the side plank position, you wanna be slightly rolled forward or um, outside shoulder is towards the floor. That really gets the obliques involved. The obliques are a huge stabilizer 
for your pelvis. So focusing on them is a great thing to do. Next movement and last movement that I have for you is 90-90 reach with uh, knees bent, okay? So we're gonna move our mat to the wall. And I'm gonna lie on my back, placing my feet on the wall. 90-90, so 90 knees, 90 hips. Now, I wanna tuck my butt. That doesn't mean bridge, it just means that my butt is tucked. Okay, so when you tuck your butt, your abs should go in, your hips are slightly tilted up to the ceiling. Then I'm gonna raise my hands over my head. I'm gonna take a deep breath in and blow it out, and as I blow out, I'm going to extend my arms over my head, keeping my ribs down and tight. Okay? Every time you breathe out, you should think about ribs coming down and back. Don't let them go as your hands are over your head. Butt is tucked in and tight. Deep breath. And let it all the way out. Make those abs work. They should be squeezing really tight. So you're gonna do that for four to six breaths. Relax, and everything should be for about two to three sets. A way that you can make that movement a little bit more advanced, two things. You can add a ball between your knees, which you may wanna do just to be able to feel, to kind of squeeze with your inner thighs on that ball. That'll also help activate your core, your pelvic floor muscles, and you might wanna add a light weight to your hands. So maybe five pounds, eight pounds, and that weight will create resistance that your abs can kind of pull against as your ribs are going down and in. All right, so those are my top exercises for fixing diastasis recti. They are ones that I have done, and I recommend if you just had a child and you are approved to go back to working out, get on top of these exercises and do not do any crunches or isolated abdominal movements until you have done these for at least several months. And for those of you women that have had children a long time ago or even a couple years ago, you can still correct diastasis recti. So give these movements a shot, add them in two to three times a week, and I know that you will see a difference. All right guys, I got plenty more exciting workouts coming, don't worry. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all soon.